Hey everybody, welcome back to Awaken the Wonder. I am Caleb Wampler. I'm your host for today and excited to jump into this week's episode. Right off the top, make sure you guys subscribe, leave a rating, and I do encourage everybody to watch on YouTube if you are listening. We have a more full experience. You can be a part of the video experience as well and be a part of the beautiful set here in the studio. But uh, I am excited for today's episode. And today's gonna probably be the shortest podcast since the reboot of Awaken the Wonder. Uh, it's more of a thought that I want to express to you guys today that I felt the Lord put on my heart. And so uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna communicate it quickly and see how the Lord uh, brings it out to you. So it's gonna be cool. Uh, but also I just got back from Pakistan and uh, we had an incredible time. And right now we're actually still awaiting the results of the crusade. Uh, we, going into this crusade, have seen 901,000 people come to Christ. And there was tens of thousands, more than 100,000 people that came to the crusade this week. And so we're just waiting on the final count. But uh, we are right on the cusp of seeing 1 million people come to Christ. Now, as this was our largest crusade of the year, uh, I, I was very excited to uh, spend some time there. I've been to this nation many times, but it's always special uh, because we put so much work, so much time, so much effort, so much fundraising. And I do want to thank everybody who sewed into this crusade as well, uh, because your guys' financial contributions, your prayers, you're, you always bring us through. So thank you so much. Um, I'm also uh, excited because um, I, I there's just been some cool things the Lord has been speaking to me lately. And this one particular one is actually, it might as well be as much of a personal one as anything. So maybe you've experienced something like this, or maybe you can uh, learn and grow from this as well. But this is something that was recently spoken to me and challenged to me. Um, if you saw back to our one of our previous podcasts called From the Pit to the Palace, I talked about the life of Joseph. And um, if you did not see that, um, I would encourage you guys to go back and listen to it. We'll throw it in the show notes as well. But this word was a word that I delivered and gave out, and it was actually picked up by the Elijah's List um, and broadcast all over the world. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people viewed this um, this teaching, the videos, the, the writings. Um, it, it was a word I felt for the body of Christ. And so I have felt a similar a similar parallel in my life to this Joseph uh, teaching right now. And um, I went out to lunch with Tim Yesta. He was a, a guest of our podcast. And also, Carlos, if you can throw that in the show notes as well. Um, Tim Yesta, he, he's an amazing man of God. He attends the river with Rodney Howard Brown. He's a, a, a businessman and an ordained minister there as well. But anyways, he, um, I went out to lunch with him right after recording that podcast. We go over there to a place around the corner, and we're talking and dreaming about everything that God's doing in our lives. And he said, you know, Caleb, the Lord spoke to me recently, and um, he, in, I was, I was t talking through some things and trying to fill some things out, trying to grow in my boldness and faith and He's like, the Lord told me something. And he goes, maybe I'll maybe I'll share this with you and I'll tell this to you too. In fact, I haven't even told him <laughs> how much this impacted me. But he said, I heard the Lord just tell me this phrase, wear the coat that I gave you. Wear the coat that I gave you. Now, I knew immediately he was talking about the life of Joseph. Now, if you flip back to uh, Genesis chapter 37, um, <clears throat> verse 3, it says, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had made a special gift for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because the father loved him more than the rest of them, and they couldn't say a kind word to him. Now, this coat, was a coat of many colors. Um, it, it was it was representative of the favor that God had given Joseph in his life. And as it says, Jacob gave it to Joseph because uh, he loved him more than any of the other brothers. Now, 
as if you're a parent, I don't recommend even if you love one of your kids more than the other kids that you tell them that it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, this is the Bible. So we're just reading it as it says it. Um, the, this, this was a symbol of the favor that God had put on the life of Joseph. Now, in connotation, we like to try to make everything fair, normal, just. If you put a bunch of people in the room and somebody's more bold and somebody's more shy, everybody kind of tends to match and balance the boldness and the shyness. Nobody wants to be singled out. And so everybody kind of comes to a neutral place and um, everybody tries to find their role in the hierarchy of a bunch of strangers. It's just natural. Go on an airplane <laughs> and, uh, you know, you got a bunch of strangers and go into an airport, a bunch of strangers, you know, go into a lounge, a bunch of strangers. And you can kind of figure out where you fit in the hierarchy. Nobody wants to upset the apple cart per se. Uh, everybody's just kind of trying to chill in their in their bubble. But this declaration that God uh, through Jacob puts onto Joseph is you are highly favored. You are blessed. You are anointed. Now, Joseph, I believe, and maybe I'm wrong, whether it be his immaturity or pride, Joseph like starts having these dreams he's a dreamer. God uses this to ultimately save the world. So <laughs> it all worked out. But Joseph, he's having these dreams and then he starts to deliver them. I don't know if it was, I'm just, I know the dreams came from God, but I wonder, I just have wondered in my mind and in my heart as I think through this story, if when Jacob gave that coat to Joseph, if like it went to his head a little bit, and then he started walking around a little more proudly. He said, look, I am the favored child. You know, <laughs> J- Joseph definitely made some mistakes in his life. And, and you can read the story in Genesis um, and you can find out uh, you know, more about that story. But he ultimately made some poor decisions. And he also was falsely accused of some things that he didn't do. And so he did great decisions. And But everywhere he was, he was highly favored, highly favored highly favored for God was with Joseph. You can read it multiple times in this passage from Genesis 37 and on. But um, the the point was God's favor was there. And I believe that this symbolism, especially in the Old Testament, they would do this. They would declare blessings over their kids. And Jacob declared this blessing over Joseph, that he was highly favored and blessed. You can walk in that with a humility that Joseph, if he would have walked in a humility um, in that season, he probably would have been a little bit better off and maybe not sold into slavery, but that was God's plan and it all worked out and God got the glory in the situation. That isn't the point of what I'm talking about today. But this phrase, wear the coat that God gave you. My friend spoke this to me and it really, really impacted me in my heart. Because I, I myself have been a minister. I've been an evangelist. That's how most of you know me. That's how most of you have come to this ministry. In previous seasons, I was a youth pastor. Uh, I pastored for six years in different uh, different churches in Minnesota. Um, prior to this, and if you heard a previous episode, I was talking about my junior high days, uh, you know, when I was in sixth through eighth grade in Lakeland, Florida. And four, uh, four days a week, we had Christian meetings on our campus. Uh, in a public school, in June, in um, in elementary school, when I was eight, we did a prayer around the flagpole every single week that I led, and once a week had a Bible uh, Bible teaching and sports club, or we would do hopscotch and four square and dodgeball, and I would preach the gospel every single week at an, as an eight year old. Then in high school, by the time we were seniors in high school, my my ministry partner Joshua Smith, you guys have seen him, my best friend. We, we, four days a week by senior year, we had Christian meetings on our public school campus. So ever since I can remember back to being eight years old and on, I have, I have been in ministry settings, but I've also had this other area of business, entrepreneurship. I've had these, um, where when I was a youth pastor, I always was doing evangelism and it's like evangelism, evangelists weren't a thing that I ever saw. Uh, People were missionaries and pastors, but not evangelists. And I always felt evangelism. So I've, I finally branched into evangelism 
And then when I get into evangelism, I'm around all these other evangelists and my previous uh, employer that I worked for, they're, they're amazing at evangelism. They attract a lot of evangelists around. But all of a sudden, I have all of this prophet stuff starts coming on my life where I'm getting these revelations for the body of Christ and prophecy type things where I knew God was asking me to, to come in and as in the role and office of a prophet in these different seasons. And I start delivering this prophecy, prophet stuff, and I'm going, this doesn't fit the evangelist mold. This doesn't really fit, you know? And I'm like, how do, why do I feel different than different evangelists? And it wasn't a better than or worse than. I'm just, I wanted to just be raw and vulnerable with you today because I think some of you can relate to this story where maybe times and life change and seasons change. But I'm looking at this season, and while I'm in this season, some of this prophet stuff, I'm going, man, why do I always feel like I don't belong in these rooms and in these situations. And then all of a sudden this like birth for business and entrepreneurship, it just starts birthing off of my life. I don't know how to explain it. I start getting around different people and God just starts breathing on my life in this area and teaching me. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I, I'm not going to say I'm some established whatever way out there and I'm not some multi-billionaire at this point in my life. I'm not a millionaire, <laughs> not, not even close to a millionaire in my life. But I believe God has put an anointing on my life to build wealth and to teach others how to understand this world a little bit more. And all of a sudden, I start getting connected to politicians and business leaders and all this stuff. And I'm like, God, what are you doing here? Why are you? I don't even, I'm the guy who literally is the least political of any situation. I, I avoid political debates like they're the plague. I don't want anything to do with them. Um when it comes to business, like, I don't know anything about business. I didn't grow up in business. And all of a sudden, God starts breathing on these entrepreneurial ideas. And I looked at the life of Joseph when my friend said this, wear the coat that God gave you. And I realized that God had put his favor on Joseph to be a leader. The sun and the moon are going to bow down to you, you know, um, all, all of these things. He'd put an anointing on Joseph's life, even though he grew up in that uh, in the role of his family and the shepherds and everything that were there. He anoints him for this business and he goes and puts him in a training ground at the palace. He goes from the pit to the palace to being falsely accused to a dungeon. And then that dreaming gift that God put on his life all those years before that he misused in the moment now gets brought back and used again. And that dreaming gift brings him before Pharaoh. So now he becomes in an instant, the second most powerful person in the world like that. But he had a training ground in his life and he didn't always wear the coat that God gave him. And sometimes he wore it, but he wore it proudly, uh, not like in a good pride way, in a way, but I got the coat, man. You guys are all going to bow to me. You know, for, he could have used a little discernment and wisdom in that, I think. But but this story of wearing the coat that God gave you, I want to encourage you guys. Whatever God is calling you to as you grow and adapt and learn, be that all the way with humility. Whatever God is birthing in you, be that all the way with humility. We have so many things in our life that God has spoken to us, that he has breathed into our lives. And so often, in order to not upset the apple cart of the highest person in the room and the lowest person in the room, we just kind of marry our lives into the mold and whatever kind of fits with everybody else. But Joseph was born to save the nation and to save the world of a coming famine. <laughs> Joseph was anointed for business and ministry. He was anointed in Pharaoh's chamber to, as a foreigner, to be gifted and anointed to save the world. That was Joseph's calling. And I believe that act that Jacob did by giving him that coat was a prophetic declaration over Joseph's life. He, you know, I don't know why Jacob did that unless the Lord just spoke it to him and told him to do it. And why he so outwardly you know, said, I love Joseph more than all my other sons. You know, <laughs> he probably could have done that differently. I don't know. Joseph at the time was the youngest. We know Benjamin came along, but like 
it seemed kind of crazy, but that's just how it was. And that's what happened in the Bible. And I'm just reading the story. Who knows why he did that? But you guys know, and if, if you don't know, get on your face and ask God. But some of you that are listening today, you know God has anointed you for something. He has gifted you with something. He has called you to something. And I don't care what your church said, what your pastor said. I don't care what your friend said, your rich uncle said, or your poor uncle said. I don't care what the family reunion said. And if anybody in your family's ever done it before, and I don't care what your college professor said. What has God put on your life? He has given you a coat. Wear that coat proudly and walk into the destiny that God has put on your life. If he's anointed you to make money, then make as much money as you can possibly make and then make some more and bless God's kingdom with it. If he has anointed you to be a politician, then don't cheat your way to the top and, and, and grab a hold of that thing and go all the way to the presidency or the king or the diplomat or whatever, whatever position you're supposed to be. Do it all the way and be the best possible one and rise to the highest rank that you could so you can exhibit that influence. If God has anointed you with power and you are just everywhere you go, like you're just the most powerful person in the room, you're operating in this strength, then obtain as much power as you possibly can and use it for God's glory to bless people, to help people, to love people, not for your own glory, but for the glory of God. If God has gifted you and anointed you for something, wear the coat that God gave you and don't back down an inch from it while walking in humility. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you will do that, you are going to be risen up to a place of position, power, prominence, anointing, gifting, calling, financial blessing. You are going to be right in the sweet spot of destiny for God uh, and what he's doing in your life. But wear it and wear it all the way. Don't back down an inch because you feel uncomfortable in a room or because you have a bigger vision or dream than the person who's over you, the boss who's over you, the friend who's over you, the person you're running with, the mentor, the leader. You can do all these things in love and you can do them all in wisdom and God will certainly shift things around and do them and there's a right way to do these things. But whatever it is, wear it the right way and wear it all the way. We don't need half-hearted people doing half-hearted things because nobody that's ever half-hearted done anything has ever changed the world. There are so many things buried in the cemeteries of this world for people that got scared, that that just be, became a wuss and wussed out in their situation, who operated in fear, who, who didn't rise to the level of what they were called to do. Wear the coat that God gave you and save the world, save the company, save the family, save the neighbors, save the children, save whatever it is that God's asked you to save but wear it all the way and be proud of that thing. Walk in humility, but do it proudly because God has given each of you a coat that only you can wear. I am doing that myself in ways more than I ever did before. I'm becoming more bold about it. I'm becoming more free in it. I don't understand really the fullness of everything God's called me to do, but I know he's called me to go after the billion soul harvest. I know he's called me to, to, to build wealth and to, to operate in favor and to build wealth and to teach the body of Christ how to do this. I'm learning it myself right now. I'm not even, I'm not, I don't have any kind of status or, or something that the world would say, you've arrived or you're a millionaire or you're a billionaire. I don't, I'm not anything close to those things on paper right now, but I know God has gifted me in some of these areas to be able to do that, to fund the harvest, to teach others how to fund the harvest. And you can guarantee I'm gonna do it. I know he's called me in the office of a prophet sometimes and the evangelist title that you guys see, um, just, I'm certainly going to operate in those things as well. But the office of that prophet, I'm going to be marching in that many times as well. You're going to see that with different hats in my seasons. I'm going to do that. What, are, what is it that God's asked you to wear? What code is on your life? Put it in the comments. I would love to hear. Please do share. Um, I'm curious the different things that God is asking you to wear. And uh, maybe there's ways to connect and do it together and bless each other. But I love you guys. I bless you today. 
Just go forward in faith and in victory. Don't back down an inch from the destiny and the purpose and the calling and the victory that's on your life. You're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to win. Keep marching forward. Don't quit and wear the coat proudly. I'll see you guys at the same time next week. God bless you. See you soon.